Yeah, welcome to another, it's either with me in the picture, it's either we're hiking or B, we've got another project. And since I'm just standing still with no hiking sticks, it's hiking another sticks. project. And this is a project that I we thought we were never going to do. Never. But we're going to try this. Hopefully we'll love it. It is possible we will absolutely hate this, but we're gonna take you along on the installation and why we're doing this. And what are we doing? We are... Going compost. Yes, we are. Stay tuned. You're gonna see some interesting stuff here. So some of the things I know I'll need, a plug for the water line that's in the back. Hopefully I got the right size. Um, and then some white tape, because you never know if you need white tape um, to keep that leak from the water line. And last little important detail. Yeah, your sniffer will appreciate it if you do this. Your significant other will appreciate it if you do this, is to make sure that you drain the black tank and flush it real well. Um, that way we don't have any other issues with uh, over... Minimizing you, It's going to stink. I've got adjustable wrench because I don't have a one inch wrench on me so I got an adjustable just to get the water line off and two wrenches here a ratchet wrench and a half inch regular wrench to get the screws off for the side of the toilet. The first step of this project is one to turn off the water pump and that concludes my portion of this video. I'm passing it on to Gary over there. So what I'm going to do is I gotta remove the water line first. All right, so first things first, we're gonna take the water line loose. I turned the, uh, my luxurious assistant turned off the water supply. I've got a towel so here. so proficient. And so I've gotta do this blind. I'm gonna take my beacon back there. So I'll just take, whoa. I forgot to flush the toilet first. Oops. Relieves head water pressure. You want to give me that plug? Yep. Um, My lovely assistant. I'm doing in. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. It's a half inch MPT plug. Something that'll fit inside that coupling there. And before I go any further, I'm going to check. Make sure we don't have a big leak there. You see water coming out? I don't see water. I don't think so. It moved. No water. Good stuff. For once, I went to a hardware store a day in advance and got something that actually worked, which is unusual. So if you're a big guy, you'll appreciate trying to fit in this small area. And you just take a screwdriver, flat blade screwdriver, and just pop that cap up. And then what I'm going to do is take these off. Take these loose, anyway. There we go. One that is loose. So I'm going to get the other side real quick. All right, so I'm going to pull the toilet straight up. And voila, she's off the foundation. Yay. I took this front plate off to inspect the flange that's going into the tank. It looks okay. It's all... It looks either glued in or fusion glued in, so it should can't be see in there, but good. that's okay. It, you can't see in there. Um, there's only like that much space in between the top deck and this. But we kind of cleaned it out, got that, just kind of did some thorough inspections. We're just kind of tidying up here, and then uh, we'll start getting things put together. So we've been in our camper for five years, and three of it actually being full time. So why? would we possibly want to go to a composting toilet? Well, let me give you some background. With our current rig, we can go about two weeks uh, boondocking before we have to go ahead and dump our tanks, which I think is pretty good. In order to get to that, we have several things that we implement in order to minimize our water. So for example, we take military showers. We limit showers to only two times a week. We use a water saver shower head. We do not flush toilet paper down for number one visits. When cleaning the dishes, we use our napkin or spatula in order to clean off the plates. 
We use a spray bottle with some water and soap in order to pre-clean dishes. And we try to use as little water as possible to rinse dishes. We kind of make it a game. And we have water savers on all of our sinks. Um, that plethora of things has been able to get us off and doing boondocking for up to about two weeks before we have to dump. So for us, a composting toilet needs to get us well past that two week mark before we'd even consider it. So we chose this Ogo toilet. And the main reason, almost, almost the number one reason, is that this is the shortest composting toilet available on the market. As you can tell, the height of these things are quite different, which is a big challenge in our rig. Off camera, we cut a three quarter inch plywood base using the toilet as a template and spray painted the edges black. We put one of these plugs in and the screw head, I just keep it proud of this. And then we push down where we want to drill our hole. We're going to oversize this hole anyway, but just to kind of give us a starting point where we think we want it. Ancient Gary secret. You can't really see it, but... I saw the big hole. You can see the thing from the screw, so... Yeah. I hate plumbing. Why'd you convince me to do a toilet? Really? <laughs> I love you. So we wanted four and a quarter? Yeah, four and a quarter, four and a half. Just so it's we'll bigger. Ahead. So just so it's bigger than the, yeah. than the flange opening. I was trying to be snazzy, but you'll see how that worked oh. out. Oh, it's unraveling. That did not work. But we wanted a little more than that, right? Maybe yeah, it'll help you draw your lines too. Yeah. Yeah. Meh. There we go. Can we can we unscrew this? Yeah, it's close enough for government work. Good enough. We don't normally tackle projects like this while on the road, but we met some amazing folks who were crazy enough to let us borrow some of their tools. Just note, no tools or fingers were damaged in the making of this video. Not picture perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Exactly. I think Gary, Gary's uh, circle is about as bad as me drawing it. Thankfully, nobody's going to see that. We don't have a scroll saw. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have a scroll saw yet. Nice. All right, back to the hardware store. Second time. Yay. I hate plumbing, really. <laughs> and for us, the biggest problem with a composting toilet is the pee bottle. It is so small. It only lasts for like a day or two with two people. So if my current rig can handle two weeks going on there, why would I change to something that would only last for two days? That seems silly to me. But now we're thinking about going to places that outside of the US, we're thinking of traveling to Mexico, we're thinking of going into Canada up to Alaska. And although it's really easy to find dump stations in the US, it really gets a lot harder once you start going um, into Canada and Mexico. I'm always wiping my wet hands on the bottom of my pants in these places. I don't know. Do you do that too? And I'm not saying that there aren't dump stations in Mexico or Canada, that's absolutely untrue. But if we're trying to do more shoulder seasons, especially when it is going up to Alaska, a lot of those campgrounds may be closed. And that was something we were worried about in the early spring and later in the fall. So we thought this might be a really good idea in order to bridge that gap. The biggest thing that pushed us over is that pee bucket. We did not want to deal with that, but they have a new option that we can drain the pee, instead of using the pee bu bucket, we can kind of drain that into our old black tank. That would mean our black tank right now, which has our toilet and our bathroom sink, would end up becoming a gray tank, which 
would just have the sink contents and be not too bad. So here we are with the drain wide open, so it's nice and stanky. We're trying to eliminate the pee bucket in the front of the thing and also try to keep it as low as possible. Ogo does have a flange adapter plate that's already made and it's it comes you can buy it already set up. Uh, the issue with that is it's two and a quarter inches tall, which we're very limited in height. Two and a quarter, I'll pretty much have to make more headroom for me to sit on the toilet. So and to offset that, we're using some three quarter inch plywood and making an inch and a half off the top. And then that way this drain will make a groove in the wood so that this drain will fit inside there. And then once I got, I'll figure out how to make this work and it will go from there. So what I did was several trips to the hardware store and uh, we came up with a hose solution that will work. Um, so now the flange, I'll be able to put this flange down tight and then I uh, will seal it up with some silicone and then that'll stay tight down on there. And then these, these hoses will run up inside the toilet up to the, the thing. This, then this thing will attach and I'll show you that once I put the toilet on. This was here originally, so I replaced all of that with this hose set up. It's a three quarter to a half inch, but I don't think it's gonna matter. We're keeping this down, trying to keep this down below the inch and a half level. So I'm just, just smidgen, just, it, it touches here on the edge of the band clamp, but we're right at that inch and a half mark with it right up here. And then this comes up in through the housing and it'll feed up in there with some more. We'll put some, I'm gonna put some bracing in there, but it should work. So this is where we're at so far. Um, almost there to install the toilet. Right now I'm gonna secure this plate down to the decking here and we'll see what happens past that. As you would expect, there were a few iterations, but we ended up with the half inch hose routed inside the PVC. That gave us some rigidity towards the base of the toilet while allowing the flexibility at the top to connect to the urine funnel. And to be clear, this unique modification was needed only since we were trying to reduce the added toilet height. Gary got annoyed with me videotaping the rest of the install, so you just get to see the results. He routed both the air hose and the 12 volt power under the dinette table. He grabbed 12 volt power for the fan from our furnace. Gary also had to extend the hose just a little bit to reach our black tank valve box, but this seemed to work. Here's what it looks like from the outside. We added some fine mesh to help minimize gnats getting into the compost bin too. So I can't believe it's been four weeks since we installed this Ogo composting toilet. We are here in North Carolina after several weeks and we're definitely going to be doing some modifications. Basically related to how I can get up on this thing. So as you can tell, climbing up onto the throne is not my favorite thing to do. And we're going to see if we can get some of that resolved. One bonus is that Gary, even being 6'1", and we'll show you that later on, can fit in here. You kind of have to crouch a little bit. I mean, standing straight up, it's not gonna work, but that's okay. I think we are able to use this effectively um, as long as we have a better way to get up to the toilet and a platform for our feet. So that is my plan this week. It seems I got myself in a little bit of a pickle. We installed this composting toilet uh, 
a month or so ago in Michigan when we were still there. We put the base on there, got everything installed, and and I didn't keep the template for the base. And now that I'm trying to put this step on here, I have to figure out the uh, the curvature of this toilet, which is nice, but a little bit of a pain, especially if you don't have a template. And we can't really take the toilet off because all of that pee diverter area um, is basically kind of just, it's in there. It's going to be an absolute pain to get out. So I'm going to be using the cardboard technique to at least attempt to get this curvature. Wish me luck. While the idea of using the toilet seat for the template was good, the base we cut wasn't exactly to the template size. So instead of saving time, I mixed up my steps this day, just going back and forth from the camper to the garage. Well, who knew that making steps for this toilet would have been such a pain in the rear? I was expecting to spend two, maybe three days because of the cutting and the staining and all that stuff. It's been like six days. I'm going to show you what I ended up with, which is not grandiose by any means, but at least it's functional. Our toilet, again, is on a slide. This whole slide comes into the doorway. So I really had to make sure that everything stayed into the slide and wouldn't be hitting the door, or preventing us from closing the slide, which I did the first time. So don't do that. Don't make the same mistake as me. So the first cool thing I did was to create this little small step. It looks really not wide because it's not. Um, it had to fit in that little area there, but it's a little step and it's a little more than what we would have had without it. And then this is the added step for placement of your feet while you're on the toilet. It's uh, again, not a lot, but it's a little bit more than what we had to make things more comfortable. And you can see, Although it's not perfect, um, backing up onto the toilet and sitting down is a little bit easier than it was before. Getting up and coming down and flipping this up, not too bad. So the biggest question that I have for you is, would you have done this? Was this the right decision? I don't honestly know. So far, the maintenance on it has been pretty easy, uh, but I think it was ultimately this height thing that was giving me a uh, significant pause. I do love the fact that I do not have to go around with a pee bucket. Other people say, you know, it doesn't matter what other people say, honestly. All that mattered to me is that I wasn't going to have to deal with that every two days. And for our use, that was was good enough. Uh, I think the solids portion is actually really easy, um, a lot easier and a lot less messy than I was expecting, although I still let Gary to go ahead and do that. And we are at the beginning of this adventure with this composting toilet. So I'm sure we're going to learn as we go. We do use a spray on the urine side. So the, this bottle came with 
the Ogo toilet. I fill that up with a small amount of white vinegar and went to Walmart and got some essential oils. So I do put in, what is this? I, man, I need my glasses. Uh, eucalyptus and lemongrass. So I heard that gnats and stuff don't like the eucalyptus. So that's why I picked that up. And it makes things smell a little bit nicer every time uh, you go to the bathroom. You just shake that thing up and spray. We did have a little bit of an issue with some gnats for uh, just a few days. Uh, we ended up ordering the higher fan speed for the Ogo toilet. It seemed to me like things were not staying dry as much in the solids bucket. So we ended up doing that. That seemed to help. I also ended up... Ugh, putting another thing together. The main ingredient in here was vinegar and neem oil, N-E-E-M. It's supposed to kill like gnat larvae and stuff like that. It is nasty smelling. I'll tell you, I don't like to use it, but it does work very well. I ended up putting this into the solids bucket, kind of spraying it on the top for three days. And then I, and then we did not have gnats after that. So this is more of a, if we need it, hopefully we don't, but I bought neem oil off of Amazon. I'll put links and stuff in the description below if you're interested. And another question that people ask, all right, so we have a separation of solids and liquids. Do I have any problems with missing, uh, especially from a female side? And the answer is yes, I do. I miss fairly regularly. I do try to sit forward on the toilet, but splash happens. On the plus side, Ogo has a little bit of a diverter piece on there to where it's really not an issue. If I'm using the restroom and I kind of miss on the backside, I just use a little bit of toilet paper, dry it up and no issues. And it doesn't get into the solids bucket, which is a big deal. All right, Gary, I'm sure many people are gonna be asking, how does this work? So I'm 6'1", just for reference. I know weigh a little more than I should, but. So you can get on it. And of course I got my pants on, but. <laughs> yes, we So are. I do have a little bit of headroom, even with my hat on, I do have a little bit of headroom, so. And you're just leaning. And I'm just leaning forward, forward like I would on the throne normally, so. With the new, uh wood down there has it been pretty reasonable to yeah the, the new step here really does help out a lot because my feet are bigger and trying to fit them in the little slots here next to the thing didn't work well so this does work well um and then obviously they got the, she's got the other one down there but it does fit well and i have no issues with using the toilet it works well only issue is you, you can't stand up and whiz like most guys do because it's we're in and out type of thing but a little bit of a pain there but you know it works another question do we put toilet paper in the composting toilet when i bought the toilet originally i was 100 percent planning on putting toilet paper into the solids bucket i did not want to deal with that stuff so we did that the first couple of days and we noticed that the um, churning mechanism in there seemed to be getting caught up with a lot of the toilet paper and I just it wasn't it wasn't getting into the compost so we ended up stopping putting toilet paper in there but i did hear that you might still be able to do that if you kind of spray the toilet paper down with maybe a vinegar solution I chose not to do that, um, and I, I think I found a decent of an, enough solution for where to put the toilet paper uh, to where I'm, I'm not going to do that and just use that for a longer period of time, which again gets us out in boondocking a little bit longer. So if I'm not putting the toilet paper in the composting bin, where am I putting it? I didn't want to have a regular bin that is open because honestly I don't want to see that shit literally so 
uh, what we ended up doing was, again, a more expensive solution, but worked for me. Um, so what I have right now is this cute little guy called the Optimus Trash Can. I know, go ahead, roll your eyes. I, I totally get it. It's stupid expensive for a trash can, but honestly, for this particular use, I'm kind of grateful for it. So it has sensors on the front, so you just wave your hand and uh, the top opens up for toilet paper to be deposited. It will close up as well. But the coolest thing is that once it gets full, I can hit a button and it seals the garbage can or all the contents of that into the plastic garbage can thing. And once it's done, I pull out this little tiny bag that I can then throw away. And then it automatically puts a new garbage can in there. So I really am not doing anything besides depositing stuff, pressing a button, removing this already sealed unit to take outside, which is perfect for me. It's silly, but I think it's worth it. It is USB-C chargeable, which is good, and that you do have to buy their unique bags. I bought basically six months of them for $30, so a little bit more expensive than you normally would have, but the fact that it can seal up is mm, so good. Actually, that is really inappropriate for a toilet paper comment. Anyway, so you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So uh, I think that about does it on toilet. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely let me know. Put comments uh, below. I'll be sure to try to answer them. And if you have other suggestions or things that you would have done better, let us know too. Um, we're just kind of figuring things out. So I'm sure there are others that have much better experience with this than we do at this point. So thanks again. and. Uh, as always, leave every place you visit a little bit better, and we will see you on the next trail. Bye.